Hi everyone. Let's talk about the innervation of the face. And as we go, let's keep the sensory distinct from the motor. And let's begin with the, the sensory or the afferent innervation from the face. So much of the sensory information from the face is conducted from branches of the trigeminal nerve or cranial nerve five. Cranial nerve five has three divisions. There's the ophthalmic division or V1, the maxillary division or V2, and the mandibular division or V3. Because cranial nerve five, five in Roman numerals is a V, people will frequently refer to these as V1, V2, and V3. So their dermatomes look like the following. So here's V1, there's V2, and there is V3. The boundary between V1, V2, if we were to take a lateral path from the tip of the nose out over the ala of the nose, and then up towards the medial canthus of the eye, across the palpebral fissure to the lateral canthus, and then arcing up the brow and posteriorly, almost following the occipital frontalis and epicranial aponeurosis. Everything above that line is going to be served by V1. The boundary between V2 and V3, if we we're to start at the, uh, the angle of the mouth and move laterally, you know, over that buccal space, and then about halfway over the buccinator, we gently arc superiorly and we continue upwards until we encounter that V1 dermatome. That's V2. V3, if we come down to the uh, the angle, oh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the the base of the mandible, we follow that along, and as we pass by the angle of the mandible, we take a shortcut, leaving a little bit of the jaw exposed. We go up towards the, uh, the corner of the ear, and we take a little bit of the oracle there, come around and then we head straight up. That all is V3. And then below that, if we were to take a line and run that up the posterior aspect of the neck, just posterior to the ear, and to continue upwards, and then as we begin to ascend, head back anteriorly as we're ahead of the ear. These would be areas covered by those afferents from the nerve point of the neck or herbs point. So these would be cervical plexus branches. So the cervical plexus are ventral primary rami of cervical nerves C1 through C4. The dorsal primary rami of those nerves can serve the remainder or the, the posterior aspect of the head. And the, uh, the granularity of that is really beyond the scope of, uh, of our sessions. So these are the, uh, the basic head and a little bit of the, the neck uh, dermatomes that you want to keep in mind as we, uh, as we continue our, our discussion. But before we jump off of this slide, um, I just wanted to take the opportunity to, to point out to you the anterior skull. The skull, by this point, you understand, has many different fissures and foramina. And if we're looking at the skull, we can see three sets of foramina fairly distinctly. One, two, three. These are almost... 
almost in a line with one another. Um, not not quite, but just about. You kind of visualize them that way. Um, and so these three foramina represent branches from V1, V2, and V3. And so the uh, the first set of foramen here it's a true foramen here it's just a notch these are the supraorbital either foramen or notch this next set are the infraorbital so supraorbital is of v1 infraorbital is of v2 it's a terrible two um, so supra means above the orbit infra means below the orbit so those are exquisitely well named and then finally down here we have the mental foramina these are flanking the mental or the the chin region and so those mental foramina are for the terminal branches of v3 as we'll see. So let's let's keep those in mind also as we uh, move through here. So let's start with uh, V1, the ophthalmic division. Um, if you uh, participate in a session regarding the orbit and you uh, look at the superior aspect of the orbit with the orbital plate removed, um, you'll begin to see a, a couple of nerves uh, traversing through. One of the more prominent ones is the frontal nerve. The frontal nerve travels across the superior aspect of the orbit and it's going to ramify into two nerves. There's the supraorbital nerve and the supratrochlear nerve. The, uh, the supratrochlear nerve is the smaller of the the two branches and it has a more medial distribution the superorbital nerve is the larger of the two branches and it has a more lateral distribution as it covers the uh, the dermatome next up we have uh, the maxillary division v2 uh, much of V2 is quite uh, well hidden in the deep face, as we'll see. Um, but as it pertains to the, uh, the afferents from the face, coming out of the infraorbital foramen is the infraorbital nerve and its branches. And then V3 has uh, quite a diversity of nerves. Uh, V3 or the mandibular division um, is coming out of the infratemporal fossa, so it's entering in there via foramen ovale, um, and then it's ramifying and uh, going into and out of various places. So let's see, the, the first branch here that we'll discuss is the auriculotemporal nerve. The auriculotemporal nerve has an interesting pattern as it branches off of the trunk of V3. It splits and it wraps around. So as it goes posteriorly, it splits like so before coming back together. And it wraps around an artery called the middle meningeal artery. The middle meningeal artery goes up to uh, to serve the meninges. Um, but the auriculotemporal nerve uh, continues on posteriorly and it's going to serve you know, the parotid gland and it's going to ascend wrapped up here with the posterior auricular um, artery and vein. And it's going to be sensory for uh, this this area that's oops, it's 
anterior to uh, the uh, the ear there. There's also um, the buccal nerve, very frequently called by clinicians the long buccal nerve. Uh, that long buccal nerve is transmitted through the uh, the buccal space to, and we can't see this uh, superiorly here or superficially, but it innervates the uh, the skin that's superficial to the the cheek region and then finally we have the mental nerve the mental nerve is the terminal branch of the inferior alveolar nerve so that inferior alveolar nerve um, enters into the mandible and it innervates all of the mandibular teeth and it comes out the mental foramen to provide sensory to the chin and lower jaw region so that's the uh the trigeminal nerve uh, dermatomes in a nutshell. Let's take a look at the uh, at the facial nerve or the the motor innervation to the uh, the muscles of facial expression or the mimetic muscles. So the uh, the facial nerve is an extraordinarily complex nerve. You know we are seeing the motor branches for the facial nerve, but the the facial nerve is going to actually um, begin to exit the skull through the internal acoustic meatus. So seven goes in with eight, which is the vestibular cochlear nerve, um, into the internal uh, acoustic meatus or auditory meatus. And it begins to travel through one of the longest osseous canals in the skull. It's about three centimeters long and it's called the facial canal. Just write this up here. And as seven travels through the facial canal, it's going to give off a, a couple of major nerves. So just spitballing here, there's the greater petrosal nerve. That greater petrosal nerve is eventually going to conduct uh, preganglionic parasympathetic fibers to the pterygopalatine ganglion to serve the lacrimal gland, etc. While we're still in the canal, it's going to also give off the corda tympani. The corda tympani is going to be an important uh, branch of facial that provides preganglionic parasympathetic fibers to the submandibular ganglion, which serves the, the sublingual glands as well as the submandibular glands. It's also going to conduct uh, special sensory taste fibers from the, uh, the anterior two-thirds or the, the presulcal um, tongue. While we're still in that canal, the, the facial nerve is, is going to give off a nerve to the stapedius muscle. That nerve to the stapedius muscle is responsible for tightening the stapedius, which is one of two muscles in the, uh, in the middle ear, which are capable of helping to attenuate loud sounds. And then that facial nerve is going to exit through a stylomastoid foramen. That stylomastoid foramen is between the styloid and mastoid processes of the temporal bone. And that's the motor root of the facial nerve as it's exiting. And as it does so, it really has, you know, four different main thrusts. There's going to be the temporofacial division. 
which we have there. The cervicofacial division. The nerve to digastricus, which we'll discuss in another session that innervates the posterior belly of digastricus and the stylohyoid muscles. And then the posterior auricular nerve, which is going to innervate the occipital belly of occipital frontalis and some of the auricular nerves that are or auricular muscles which are largely atrophied um, but are capable of, of moving the ear about. Now these temporofacial and cervicofacial divisions are going to be a major focus of uh, this session. And what I want to show you here is that they are once they exit through the stylomastoid foramen going to be traveling through the parotid gland. The parotid gland is one of the major salivary glands. Um, and you can see nerves exiting. So right there, 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 the parotid gland. And they're heading off in different directions. And so um, you want to take note that uh, these divisions are sometimes very true divisions with trunks, and sometimes they really don't exist at all. But as they course through the parotid gland, they ramify and they become different branches. So that temporal facial division will give off temporal branches, zygomatic branches, and buccal branches. Regarding these, as we look at the lateral canthus of the eye, temporal branches are going to be those branches which serve everything superior and lateral to that lateral canthus. So everything in this area is a temporal branch. The zygomatic branches are going over the zygomatic bone and towards the eye, so they are those branches. Buccal branches are going towards the mouth, the buccolabial, and you'll notice that the cervicofacial division also has buccal branches. These buccal branches are probably the more diverse branches amongst the, the motor root of the, the facial nerve. So they're going out to there. The marginal mandibular branch, there is but one, so let's kill that S. It actually follows the inferior border of the mandible out. And then the cervical branch is heading inferiorly so as to innervate platysma. So we have temporal, zygomatic, buccal, marginal mandibular, and cervical. The mnemonic for this, or there are very many mnemonics for this, this requires a bit of osteological knowledge, but um, uh, a lot of anatomists remember this as 10 zebras bit my coccyx. The coccyx is the tailbone. Now let's take a look at these branches with the parotid gland dissected away. And we can see uh, a little bit more here. We can see some of the, the deeper vasculature. Um, we see very, and let's, let's put our divisions up again, so. So temporal, zygomatic, buccal, marginal mandibular, and 
cervical. And we can see how, you know, these don't precisely prescribe to, you know, what we had described before. So I see a very large root coming out of here and heading over this way and giving rise to these temporal branches and even a zygomatic branch, maybe a little zygomatic branch going that way. Some buckle branches. Here's another large trunk coming out with some more buckle branches. And then back here, we can't see how this is, but coming down and around, there's another buckle branch. And there's a marginal mandibular branch tied up with that buckle branch. And let's see, um, probably coming out here is that posterior auricular branch. I'm having a little bit of difficulty owing to the depth of seeing that nerve to the digastricus as well as the cervical branch, but one can presume they're in there. So when you're thinking about the innervation of the face, don't confound afferents and efferents. Keep your sensory distinct from your motor. So for your sensory, we have the trigeminal nerve, V1, V2, V3. We have those uh, cervical plexus neck afferents, so things from the nerve point of the neck, um, as well as the dorsal primary rami of cervical nerves. And then for our efferent, we have the facial nerve. And so we've got those temporal facial division branches, so temporal, zygomatic, and buccal, and the cervical facial division branches, the buccal marginal mandibular and cervical branch. Thank you very much for your time.